I just recently went to a garage sale and I got this game. E.T. The Extraterrestrial Digital Companion for the Game Boy Color. I decided to get this game because, well, one, E.T. is perfect for Halloween because it was clearly supposed to be a horror film. And two, because, well, I'm just curious to see what another E.T. game would be like, except for, well, you know. Ah! You know, come to think of it, the guy who sold me this said I could have it for 25 cents. And then he said I could have it for free. And insisted that I leave immediately. Let's go play it! So our game starts up and asks us to give it the date and time. Interesting thing to note, it only goes up to December 31st, 2027. I'm just saying. So we get our first look at our extraterrestrial, and good god does he look creepy. Every time he looks at the viewer as if he's smiling with creepy delight. Then it asks me for my first name. And then my last name. And then my middle name. And then my nickname. Uh, why? Look, it's not uncommon in games to have times where the game asks you to put in your name so you can insert yourself into the plot, but why would a game need such specific detail about your name? So now the game wants my birthday. Okay, fair enough, a lot of games ask for your birthday, usually just for the stupid novelty of reminding you that it's your birthday. The game then proceeds to ask, what's your favorite activity, what's your least favorite activity, and then my phone num- Wait, what?! This can't work, can it? Getting scared there for a sec. The game then asks if I am a boy or a girl. Bit late for that question. The game then asks for my street address. And then my zip code. There's no way this game could identify my town without internet. What the- Alright, for sake of privacy, I'd rather not give away my zip code. However, I can guarantee to you that the game got my town right. And to prove it, I looked up two random towns, and the game got them both right. There is no way that this game could have internet, so all the information about the zip codes must be hardwired in the game, which only pushes the question, WHY? Then it asks for the name of my pet. Since I don't have a pet, I'll go with the name of my chow. The game then asks me, What is your favorite color? Blue. No, yellow. Ah! The game then asks for my least favorite color. Well, personally, I think anyone who likes the color blue is less than human, so I'll go with that. The game then asks me, what's my favorite food? What's my least favorite food? What's my favorite animal? And then who's my best friend? Friend? Okay, E.T., why do you need to know about my friends? Because, I mean, personally, I have a ton of friends, like... It's just me and you, buddy. Me and you. Then the game asks for the name of my school. But my question is why? Why would you benefit from knowing the full name, phone number, location of some child... All makes sense now. E.T.? Are you... a... child? Oh god, let's get this over with. I would stop now, but I need the views. Favorite subject? History. Color of your eyes? Brown. Hair color? Black. Favorite band? YouTube. First name of favorite actor? Steve. Last name of favorite actor? Blue. Email. Favorite TV show? Cartoons. 
What do you want to be when you grow up? Critic. Dad's first name. Why? Never mind. Mother's first name. Alright, Flame Rainer, time for fun. Oh, God! Oh. I guess that's what the phone number was for. Okay, this is actually kind of making sense now. You see, it's kind of like a predecessor to, like, the social networks or, like, having an iPhone with utilities. However, that doesn't explain all the questions it asked. I'm gonna proceed with caution. So this game includes a calendar, stopwatch, checklist, contacts, messaging system, and many other features. I'll briefly go over them. The calendar is basically what you'd expect. It has preloaded holidays and events already uploaded, and you can also upload your own school schedule and other holidays and events. There's also a couple of tools and utilities. One of them is a stopwatch, another one is a clock, another one is the cell phone? Yeah, apparently the game claims that it's a fully functioning cell phone, even though it does not come with a mouthpiece or any of the materials listed in the help menu. I don't know if this came with the game or if there's an export cable that you could plug it into an ethernet cable on the wall. <laughs> I've done some research and I still can't figure it out. Also, one thing I still ponder, what's with this game's music? say it's unnerving, it's just that you'd expect something upbeat or at least monotone for just basically background music. Instead, we get this slightly unsettling song. As I said before, this game also has a to-do list. There's some preloaded ones already here like enter a friend's name, complete about you, set your password, and feed Floggle. What's Floggle? Ah, what is that thing? Yeah, apparently you have a pet ferret three octi legged thing. You can play with it, you can feed it, apparently. In that awkward position, you can talk to it. Most of its conversations are not very complex. I'm having fun? Uh, really? You don't look like it. You also get an entire bike racing game. In fact, this could probably be its own game. I'd just like to go over one more thing before I sign off. The game also includes a really addicting tile game. I always like when games include these, because that's something that just adds a lot of depth, and I can do these for hours. Also, for each puzzle you beat, you get to unlock a picture from the movie. I always thought that was kind of neat. They're also colorized. However, as I kept playing, the images just kept getting creepier and creepier. Alright, I should probably wrap this up. However, I'm just gonna do one more before I sign off. I think we're done.